Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can use vectors to define the equations of lines and planes. So to define some simple geometrical objects. Okay, so I'll start with the equation of a line. So a line is a line. How can I write an equation for this? This means how can I write an equation which is satisfied by any point x on the line. Okay, and you can do it as follows. Suppose that my zero is here. Okay. I can start by taking a point A on the line at some point here. So as long as I know one point on the line, I can get to any other point on the line by moving parallel to a vector pointing along the line. So if I do this in red, I've got another vector here. So I'll call this vector V. So I can get any point x on the line using these two vectors, a and v. So as I've drawn this here, I can say that x is equal to a plus 2v. Right? First of all, a gets me to the line, and then I do v plus v again, and I get to x. Okay? And it's clear that you can define any other point on this line just by changing the number here. Okay? So a plus 3v will get me a point here a minus v would get me here, a plus a half v is here. So in general, the equation of the line, any point on the line x, can be written as a plus some number times v. So this is the equation of the line. So x is any point on the line. a is a specific point on the line that you know. Lambda is any number, and v is a vector pointing along the line. So let me just give you a very simple example of this. So suppose that I have the following x is equal to 1, 0 plus lambda times 1, 1. Okay, how does that define a line? Well, if we imagine here's my coordinates, okay, here's 0. So this is a here, right? a is 1, 0. So if this is 1, 0. Okay? So this is the point a. And then this is v here. v is 1, 1. So that v is a vector 1 this way and 1 that way. So it's a vector like this. v here. Okay, so the line is what I can get starting from a and then moving in the direction of v. So this defines the line like this. Okay. So this equation here defines the line here. Okay. In a very similar way, you can write down the equation of a plane. So again, I'll just draw a similar kind of picture. Suppose that I've got some plane in three or more dimensions here. And I've got 0 down here. And I want to find the equation satisfied by any point x on the plane. Then one way you can do it is if you know one point on the plane, which I can call the point A, like before. So A is a point on the plane here. And also I know that two vectors now pointing on the plane. So let's suppose I know the vector v pointing this way and the vector w pointing this way. V and W. So I have two vectors on the plane. Then I can write X as a combination of A and V and W. So in this case I could do V plus V plus W plus W. Okay. So as I've written it here, X is equal to a plus two lots of v plus two lots of w. Yeah, that works for this point here, but it's clear that I can write any other point just from some changing the numbers here and here. Okay. So our general equation for the plane is x is equal to a plus some number times v plus some other number times w. 
Okay, so just to recap, a is a point on the plane that you know, lambda is any number, and mu is any other number, and v and w are two vectors on the plane which you know. So an example would be x is equal to 1, 1, 0 plus lambda times 2, 0, minus 1 plus mu times 2, 1, 1. So that will define a plane in three dimensions. I'm not going to try and draw it. Okay. Now there's a second definition of a plane. Definition 2, which only works in three dimensions. Okay. These definitions work in any dimension. Okay. But this next definition I'll tell you for a plane only works in three dimensions. So let me explain what it is. If I redraw that picture, so here's my plane. And I have the point A on the plane here. And I have another point X on the plane over here. You can define something called the normal vector. Okay. So let me do the normal vector in green pointing up like this. Okay. So n. Okay. So here n is the normal vector And these properties that whatever it is, n is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so it's the vector which is at 90 degrees to the plane. And in three dimensions, this vector is unique, and that's why this definition only works in three dimensions. Unique up to scalar multiplication. The direction is unique, in other words. Now, if you know a and you know the normal n as well, then you can define the plane in another way by using the fact that the vector x minus a is the vector here. Okay. So the vector going from a to x is the vector x minus a. And you see that this vector is on the plane, and therefore it must be perpendicular to the normal vector n, by definition of the normal vector n. So we have that n is perpendicular to x minus a, but we know that if two vectors are perpendicular, then their scalar product should be equal to zero. So therefore we know this is true, and then we can rearrange this equation to get n dot x should be equal to n dot a. And this is a third definition, well a second definition for a plane. Okay. So Let me show you how that works. So an example, let's suppose that I take n is 1, 2, 0, and a is the point 2, minus 4, 3. Okay. Then my equation of the plane is, okay, and x is the point I don't know, so I'll give it coordinates x, y, z. That's a general point on the plane. Then we know that n dot x should be equal to n dot a. So this means that 1, 2, 0 dot x, y, z should be equal to 1, 2, 0 dot 2, minus 4, 3. Then compute the scalar products. Here I have x minus 2y. This should be equal to 2 minus 8, which is minus 6. Okay. So this equation here then defines a plane which has the normal here and the point on the plane given by this. Right, so one thing which you can do then is given that in three dimensions we have two definitions of a plane, we have the definition like this and the definition like that, you can convert between them. So I'll just, to finish this video, I'll just do an example of that. I'll start with this definition, and I'll show you how you can change it into this definition. 
Okay, so I'll take um, a slightly different example. Okay. So suppose we've got a plane given by the following equation x is 2, 1, 0 plus lambda 1, 0, minus 1 plus mu 2, 1, 1. So here then, this is A, this is V, and this is W. Okay. And what I'm going to do is write it in the form, the other definition. So write in the form n dot x equals n dot A. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, you've got A already, so that's okay. So you just need to find what the normal of the plane is. And one way you can do that is as follows. In the first definition, I've got V and W, and I know that these are two vectors on the plane. And I know that the normal vector should be perpendicular to the plane, like this. So one way you can find the normal vector is simply to take the vector product of V and W, because one of the defining properties of the vector product was that it should be perpendicular to V and W. So if V and W are in the plane, then the vector product is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so we can choose n equals V cos W. So let's calculate that. This would be 1, 0, minus 1, vector product 2, 1, 1 which is 1 minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 and 1. Okay. Yep, that's right. Okay. So therefore, we have the x, y, z. So the, the equation of the plane in this form is the n dot x equals n dot a, and I can use this for n, so 1 minus 3, 1 dot x is the unknown, so x, y, z, which will be equal to 1 minus 3, 1, and a, 2, 1, 0, so this gives you x minus 3y plus z is equal to 2 minus 3 plus 0 is minus 1. Okay. So that's the end. So we've shown that this equation here, in three dimensions, this equation here is the same as this equation here.